Okay, so story time. So in when was LeakyCon July? In July, uh, we well they did the announcement video that said that uh, Jeff was going to be at Leaky and that they were doing a very part of senior year, and I was like. I have to be there. Anything inaccurate, I will correct you. Fine, okay. Apparently Victoria's going to, going to correct me if I get any of this wrong, so whatever. So we bought... Whatever, like you want anyway. to Anyway. So we went, and obviously, you know, she's... She's more of a Harry Potter person than I am, so... She was kind of my legit person. We planned to get there Friday. We were just going to go Saturday. We bought day passes to just go Saturday. So we're going to get there Friday day and hang out. Go to the thing on Saturday and then leave Sunday. Turns out, as we all know, it's really hard to fly standby to Chicago. So we ended up getting there late Friday night. And when I say late, I mean we got there at like, I think we landed at like 9.30. Long time. And while we were in the cab, I'm sitting there going, great, this is, this is awesome. And our little candy girl group was private. And it was just like the six of us. So, Lindsay was like, oh my god, my friend Justine just met Jeff, and there's that picture of Justine with Jeff going, hey, and I'm sitting there going, I hate this girl, I hate her, like, I want to kill her right now, like, fuck, we walk into this nice hotel, I mean, it's, I mean, the Hilton is a really nice hotel, it's five stars, it's ridiculous, it's really good, so we walk in, but, we walk in, and all I see is wizard robes and people running around dressed as Snape and wands and wall-to-wall -wall people, basically. And I'm just sitting there going, are you serious? Camping out on Tumblr, I guess. Obviously, we need to stay. We need to stay in the lobby. That's where this girl saw Jeff. That's where Leaky is. Okay, so we go upstairs, we change. I changed into a slutty outfit. I'm not even going to lie. It was embarrassingly slutty. It's this little itty-bitty dress that Victoria hates when I wear it anyway. To sit on a computer, I might add. Just to sit in the lobby. Just sit there looking slutty. Why not? I don't know. Anyway, so we're sitting there. We see people walking by, you know. People are walking in and back from Leaky. Yeah, okay, well... I'm figuring they are rehearsing, so they're somewhere in this area. Jeff was here. He's going to be here. Okay. We're doing something, and I look up, and I see Dylan Saunders walking across the lobby. And I'm sitting there going, well, I've met, we've met Dylan enough. He knows. He knows. He knows we're crazy, so... No, let's, let's not pursue that. Uh, at that point when he was walking out, there was a wedding party that had apparently gotten out before. And they, it was a wedding full of deaf people. Uh, deaf groomsmen, deaf, deaf guys just walking around drunk, drunk as fuck. They were being very loud, and so Dylan looked over at us anyway. And I think he was concerned because, uh, he, but he didn't stop. He wasn't concerned enough to stop. He just kept, but he was kind of like, oh, uh, okay, yeah. So I'm telling, telling Lindsay and some of the other candy girls, I'm like, oh god, Dylan just walked by, but I'm not gonna go get him. Nope. We saw a girl walking, walking a little, and she's kind of giggling, and she had. I, I'm pretty sure now, looking back on it, that it was Clark that she was with. She was kind of giggling and like hanging on to him, and I'm like, okay, that's weird and upcoming. Okay, and that's just people. But I didn't realize it was Meredith because she was in, now I can say, it, she was it. she had her hair done up like Hermione. So, I mean, I didn't know. And then right behind her came, oh, hey, wow, that's, that's Joe Walker. That's Joe Walker rock, walking right there. No, it was Joe Walker. I remember it because I go, oh, that's Joe Walker. And then before it even registered for Joe, I'm sitting there, oh, that's Joe Walker. That's cool. Okay, that's Jeff. That's Jeff. That's Jeff walking across the lobby. That's Jeff. Okay, all right, well. And I'm just, like, staring at him, staring at them, staring, like, full-on gaping. Not even, not even trying to be discreet at all. No. 
and he looks at me, makes the eye contact, he knows, he knows I'm staring at him. And he just keeps on walking. He's like, nope, nope, nope. And I'm just thinking, oh God, why? Why didn't I run? Why didn't I just dump the laptop and go? Book it. Run. No, didn't. Didn't do it at all. No. So I'm thinking, okay, all right, that's, that's a door. So they need to come back and walk back to their rooms. So maybe if we're closer, we will talk. Maybe. I don't know. We'll have more of a chance. Now instead of there being like 50, instead of us being over here and then walking over here, we've moved up so that it's like here. So we're here and they're here. So it's more of a more of a more of a chance for us to just go, hey, instead of screaming across the lobby. Oh, and while doing this, we see Dylan come back through. And I'm like, okay, well, Dylan's coming back. They need to all come back. Maybe they went out for a cigarette. Maybe they went into Leaky to say, hey, maybe they're coming back. I don't know. I didn't realize that there wasn't anything past that. I didn't realize that that was a door and that was a parking garage. And, and that was it. So, which is important for the story in a minute. Like, talk, constantly talking to the candy girls. And while I'm doing this, Brian Holden walks by. And he's by himself. And he's walking by. And I make eye contact with him. And he sees that I have a Starship shirt on. He sees it. He acknowledges it. And I think maybe he wanted to say something. But he didn't know how to. And I didn't know how he didn't say anything, and I didn't say anything back. I didn't say anything. I just let him go. I paid all this money to go to Leaky just to see the Star Kids, and I couldn't do anything. It makes no sense. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. So, I'm just sitting there, and I'm going, okay, they have to come back. They have to come back. If they come back... As soon as they come back, I'm going to say something. I'm not letting them leave without saying anything. A little bit after that, it was like 1.32-ish, and I'm like, okay, people are coming to clean up in the lobby. We look pathetic. What's going on? And at that point, I realized, oh, everybody that we did see leave out that door and hadn't come back lived in, lives lived, lives in Chicago. So actually they had left for the night. They went home. We'd been sitting in the uh, in the lobby waiting for people that had already left. We fucked it up. I fucked it up. Yeah. And I felt like a moron. So we went upstairs and I was crying and upset and yeah. And, and then it was Saturday and we got up. We got up. So we got at like 12, 1230. The show started at 1. So we got up, got dressed, went downstairs, found the leaky registration, which at this point was completely empty. And I don't know what I expected. I really don't. I, I actually, honestly, I didn't. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't expect anything. I don't. I don't know. So I didn't expect the line that there was. Dear God, I mean, the line was like it. I don't even know how to explain it. It was they. Down the halls, up and down staircases. It was, it was a long line, very long. So we get into this line to sit down and wait to go in, and you know, I'm just, I'm still thinking. I'm just seeing so many people, so many, just surrounded by nerds, nerds upon nerds. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory term. It's just true. It was just a lot of Potterheads, a lot of people running around with scarves and wands, and I just, I felt so out of place. I had no idea what to do. I was, I, I was so confused. We were sitting behind this girl who was by herself, and her dad was like running the merchandising, and so she was, she was talking with Victoria, and she talks to Victoria, and Victoria and her just like instantly bond, and I'm sitting there going, I'm the loser here. I'm the non-cool one. Everywhere we go, I'm always the one that talks, is out there, is the outgoing one. And Victoria just kind of sits there and nods. In this, in this scenario, in this world, 
Victoria's the cool one. Victoria was the cool one and I was the loser. I was the loser sitting there going, Are you saying I'm a loser? What? No, I'm just saying I was the loser. I'm sitting there calling these people losers, but really I was the loser. You're always the loser. Nobody wants to be a loser like me. So, you know, we get, we go in, we watch the Mary Potter senior year. I've already done this. I've already said it. It was ridiculous. It was good. But, you know, by the end of it, I just wanted to die. When we come back, and I'm like, you know, what are we going to do? We've like an hour before we need to get ready. So, you know, do I want to go walk around Leaky? No. Do I want to go sit in the lobby and troll for Star Kids again? Sure, that's what we want to do. Because really, what else am I going to do? Sitting there on my laptop and about a little bit, not even that far, not even that much. We were just, I get this tap on my shoulder and Victoria's going, Sissy, Sissy, Sissy. I'm like, what, 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 what's going on? She points and she goes, isn't that Jeff? Jeff Flynn, walking by once again. Well, this point, no, no. This is not happening again. I'm not letting him leave. So I throw down the laptop. Well, I don't throw it down. But I moved my laptop. And I leaped up from the chair. And I walked around the walking And I see him walking towards the exit. I'm like, Jeff! Oh my God. And there are people. There are people in the lobby. And they kind of stop. And they're, you know, they're probably like, what the fuck? And he go probably thought it was somebody that he knew. Because obviously... He didn't expect a fangirl to stop him in the lobby. But he turns around and I'm just like, oh god, oh god, he stopped. He stopped and he turned and he acknowledged me. Assuming he assumed that because I have called him and summoned him, that I would be the one to walk over to him. But of course, I'm just sitting there going... So, he turns, and he starts walking towards me, and I'm like, oh my god, Jeff Flynn is walking towards me right now, right this second, like, oh god. Well, Victoria wasn't there, and w because Victoria wasn't there, I usually have her, and I can have her as a buffer so that I can be normal, but she, I didn't have a buffer, and so words just started spilling out. It was a lot of, oh my god, 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 hi, Jeff, oh my god, hi, hi. I only came here to see you and meet you and see a very Potter senior year and oh my god I love you and oh my god you you're amazing and oh my god I love you so much and I flirt with you on Twitter and oh my god you're amazing you're Jeff it, it, it was a whole lot of fail and he's just he's really nice and he's just like yeah he's just like well that's cool you know and and, and and you want a picture and I'm like oh god oh god I'm like, oh god my, my sister went to go get her camera in the room, and she's not back yet, so can you just n not leave? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, you know what? I will be right back in just a moment, okay? You know, you go get your camera, and I'll come back, and it'll be great. You know, he stops. Oh, he walks, he walks away, he turns around, stops, turns around, and he's like, hey, nice to meet you. And he turns and keeps walking. I don't know what that was about. I mean, I, I don't even. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that meant. So he walks off, and the first thing that pops in my head is, "Oh dear God, I need to talk to Lindsay. I need to have Lindsay on the phone. She needs to know. She needs to know what's happening." And, and at this point, we hadn't done any hangouts. We hadn't even talked to each other on the phone. So I call her, she answers the phone. This is the first time we have ever spoken on, on the phone, or period. First time. She answers the phone, and I'm just like, <laughs> And she's like, what? <sighs> Jeff Blim just walked through the lobby, and I just talked to him, and oh my god, oh, oh, oh. What? What? You just met Jeff Blim? What? Yes! Oh my god, and he walked away, and he's gonna come back and take a picture, and I just get it. And there's a whole lot of, I don't even know. What? Okay, you need to calm down, and lower the register maybe a little bit, two or three, and what, what, what's happening? What's going on? I'm just like, 
he came and he said that he was going to leave and go somewhere and come back and we're going to take a picture, but I don't think he's going to come back, but I don't think he's going to come back because I really, like, just chased him down in the lobby and I don't think he's going to come back. It's like, no, I mean, why wouldn't he come back? He has to come back. He has to come back. Right? Okay, maybe, but why would he come back? Why would he come back? I wouldn't come back. I would be running for my life. And she's just like, no, okay? Jeff is a nice person. He He's not going to leave you hanging like that. He said he'd be back, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he did. He did say that. Well, okay, he will be back. I promise, okay? Calm down. Okay, okay, all right, well, all right. I'm sitting there freaking out on the phone, and there are people in the lobby that have no idea what's going on, and they probably think that I'm a nutcase. I don't even, yeah. Fun. I love you, Lindsay, I really do, and I'm really glad that we got to share that experience as our first time talking. But what I really should have done is not call you until after this had all happened, because, you know, I should have taken that time and composed myself, and but instead, I was just, uh, the whole time that he was gone, I was just going, oh my god, no, no, oh my god, and freaking out and fangirling. I'm still on the phone, and I'm going, oh god, he's coming back, he's walking back, I right go, okay, okay, alright, bye. And I'm just like, okay, sorry, had to tell my friends, because, you know, we're crazy, and we love you, so we're all kind of freaking out. And he's like, yeah, okay, alright. Hey, picture? And I'm like, yes, yes. And picture time, yeah, all right. So he takes a picture, and he's like, all right, well, that's cool. Point when he came back, he came back with a friend, a guy friend. And, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, he's just met this guy, and he wants to go hang out or whatever. I don't know who it was. Looking back on it now, I think it might have been Dan, maybe. I'm not positive. He seemed awfully entertained by the fact that Jeff was being fangirled over. That's all I'm going to say. He took the picture and he took the camera and he was like, Oh, I can't figure out how to do the camera. Oh no, oh, I'm going to be a jerk and mess with the camera. And I'm just sitting there going, This is not, this is not funny. I don't know what, who you think you are, but stop messing with my emotions. And I blurred out, Oh dear God, if he can't take the picture, I'm going to cry. Why? The whole thing was a fail, really. I mean, it just, it doesn't even count in my mind because I've met him after that and it was so much better. So I don't even count this anymore. So he takes a picture and he's like, oh, is it okay? Yeah, okay. And I'm like, yeah, 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 it's great. Thanks, thanks so much for just taking the picture. And oh my God, I just saw a very Potter senior here and oh dear God, you were just so hot in it. And oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, by the way, do you really actually know who I am? And he's like, yeah, yeah, Felice on Twitter. Why not? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, Jeff. You had no idea. Just no. And I'm like, well, you know, if that was true, then you probably should be running. You'd probably be booking it. You're like, if you knew, you probably wouldn't come back. We all know. We all know who I am on Twitter. I'm not afraid to give any no fucks. No fucks given. Because I was like, why not? Let's just be creepy and nasty and weird. Because obviously I can't do it in real life. So he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm really sorry. I don't I don't mean to tweet you that stuff. And he was like, no, it's not a big deal. I mean, no, Twitter's all fun. Okay, Twitter's all fun and games. Okay, Jeff. Good to know. And he's like, you know, if you ever actually creep me out, I'll just call the Twitter police on you. <laughs> funny <laughs> okay yeah I'm like oh yeah yeah I'm gonna go are you guys gonna go be, go to the ball later and he was like yeah I, I think we're gonna check it out and his friend is like yeah okay and I'm like well I asked you on Twitter if you would go with me and be my date but you probably don't want to yeah yeah Ugh. yeah 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 and he just kind of laughs and it's like okay Alright, well, maybe I'll see you there. And I'm like, okay. Sounds good. He walks, he starts to walk off, and I'm like, oh god, I have to ask him about the project. About the video thing. So I'm like, hey, Jeff, did you see the Candy Girls video? And he's like, yeah, it's awesome. It was amazing. You guys rock. I'm like, yes. Okay. So then he walks off, and I'm just like, dead. 
dead, 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 dead. And then I look at the picture on Victoria's camera, and I'm just like, that picture's horrible. I look like crap. But Jeff's arm is around me, and oh my god, oh my god, I just met Jeff Blood, oh my god, oh my god. I just can't even form words, and I'm totally going to find him at the ball, and we're totally going to just gonna fall in love, and oh my god. That, that was my thinking. I don't know. We got upstairs, went upstairs, and we got ready. And so we went downstairs, and there was a long line, and finally we got, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but finally we got into the ball, and it was good, and I got to drink some grown-up butter beer, some epic fails of the ball. At one point, while we were waiting outside, while waiting to get inside the ball, we walk outside to smoke, I woke up, walk outside to smoke a cigarette, Victoria comes with us, and we see this guy outside, and he just keeps getting approached, like, like, three or four times we've seen him in the lobby, and he's really hot. Like, he was, he was, he was nice looking. Just thinking to myself, I'm like, is he famous? It, do you know him? Because she knows more stuff about Harry Potter than I do. She's like, no, I don't, I, I don't know him. He's got a girl with him, and she's, like, decked out in leather, and I'm just thinking, that's probably his girlfriend, so I'm not going to stare at him too much. So, later that night, after a couple butter beers. I'm like, you know what? I need to ask this guy if he's. Fa I need to ask this guy who he is, because they still kept coming up to him and taking pictures with him. Obviously, he is somebody. He's somebody. So I walk up to him, and I'm like, "Hey!" And I literally said, "Hey, are you really? Are you famous or something, or are you just really hot?" Like I actually said that. Like there was no. It actually happened, and he kind of laughed and hey. What he said was, I, I am in a band. He said, I'm a musician, and I guess that's why people know who I am. But it was so loud in the ball, in the, in the area, that what I heard was, I'm a magician, and that's why people like me. I don't know. I don't know why I heard that. I don't know why I thought that was a legit answer. Maybe because it's Harry Potter magic. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That that makes more sense. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, okay. Sorry. And I guess at some point he said something about his name being Jason, Jimmy Monday or something. And it turned out it was Jason Monday from, I don't even know what what he's in. He's in a band. He's in a wizard rock band. Which Haley's gonna kill me because she really loves Jason Monday and I had no idea who he was. And I got a picture with him. Because he was really hot. So at one point I got tired of, you know, being in shoes. So I just sat in the thing of purses and I was just kind of sitting there chilling, drinking my rum and coke. And this guy comes out of the VIP area and uh, he's dancing and I'm just like, this guy is weird. And this girl comes over and she starts dancing with him. And I'm like, okay, all right. And the crowd just kind of gets bigger and bigger. And as it gets bigger and bigger, Victoria has come over and sat with me. So we just keep cut, keeps getting bigger and bigger. We keep getting pushed back towards the purses. And I'm just like, okay, this guy's stepping on me. I don't understand. And at and one point, and finally, the group crowd gets too big that he's just like, okay, sorry, guys. I got to go back in the VIP. All right. And he leaves, and um, I'm like, okay, that who was that? So I walk up to some girl, and I'm like, hey, hey, who who was that? Why were you dancing with him? And he's, she's like, oh, that was Nick, uh, Matt. That was Matt Lang. Okay, all right, yeah, I suck. Night ends, and I'm more than yeah. So I'm walking down, and. Uh, you know, we don't really want to go to bed yet, so what are we going to do? Go back to the lobby. Why not? So we're walking down the lobby. Victoria's on the phone with my mother, and she says, and I'm like, you know, let, let's go over there. Let's sit on the thing with the stairs, and, you know, Victoria's on the phone, and she just kind of pinches the crap out of me, and I'm like, what the fuck? And she's like, we're going this way, and I'm like, Okay, all right, that's okay. So we're walking. As she's on the phone, still on the phone, we're walking towards where she pointed to, 
And I see the Warblers are in the lobby talking to these people. And when I say the Warblers, I mean Kurt Mega, Riker Lynch, Dominique Barnes, and Titus Minkin. Minkin? 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 Titus Minkin. So I'm going, oh God, that's the Warblers. And she goes, I know. That's why we were going this way. And she was, I was like, okay, yes, all right. Yes, finally I get to meet somebody. Cool. I should disclaim the story by saying, Kurt and I have talked on Twitter a couple times because, and we have this in common, he used to work at Starbucks and he is from Dallas. So the store that he worked at, a couple of people were before my store used to work there. He knows that I work at Starbucks and I'm from Texas. He knows who I am in that way. Just like, hi, yeah, can we, could we get a picture? Is that cool? And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's fun, cool. And they're all super nice. Oh my God, they are the nicest people. In the world. Such sweet guys. They are so nice, so sweet. And Kurt Mega, oh, Kurt Mega. Oh, he is the best. And I just kind of, you know, I was, they were like, yeah, let's get a picture. They're all kind of hanging out. And I go, Kurt, by the way, I'm the girl from, I'm the girl that works at Starbucks. And he just goes, Really? Oh my god, you guys, she's from Dallas! Oh my god, and they're like, oh, that's awesome! And I'm like, yes, yes, I am that girl, all right, yes. They all, he gives me a hug, he hugs me, and I'm just like, okay, all right, yeah, cool. And they, they all kind of hug me, and they're like, oh, that's so cool that you're from Dallas, yeah. You guys aren't from Dallas, but apparently you're happy about it. He's like, well, that's so cool, oh, okay, let's take a picture. They take a picture, and I'm nobody has seen this picture because the face that I make in it, I don't know. I think I was talking when Victoria snapped the picture because it is just the weirdest picture in the world of me, and I will never let it see the light of day. But it's I have a picture with the warblers. I do. Sure. Well, you know, you know. Oh my God, that's so cool. Could you could you give everybody a hug for me from Dallas, in Dallas from me? And I go. Well, you gotta give me a hug for me to give them and he was like oh, okay and he gives me another hug and then he gets a picture with victoria and victoria is all excited because her best friend like loves Riker lynch like loves and austin and Allie and all that crap right no, not Riker lynch, the oh the other one he lo she loves his brother so they leave and i'm just like yeah we just met the world first. yeah ross that's his name ross ross lynch that's who she loves so we go sit by the door where we have camped out now two nights in a row. I'm just like, okay, we just met the war players. That's great. Awesome. And I'm very funny this time. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> and, uh, just kind of zoned out in my own little world. And Victoria just kind of nudges me again. And it's like, I'm like, what? She goes, and I look up. And Jeff has walked past us and is walking towards the door. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, all right. I'm like, I have to, I have to go. So you know, my 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 reaction time's a little slow, a little delayed, but I attempt to get up. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not missing it this time. I will act like I'm smoking a cigarette outside. Go, okay. Walk outside. See him walking out. See him nod to the valet guy. I'm going, but it, I wasn't going to yell at him at this point because I didn't want to be like, Jeff, I'm yelling at you across the parking garage because I'm that crazy and I just met you like three hours ago. So I didn't. Granted, now, had I... And knowing how, and everybody, I, I feel like this is okay to disclaim because everybody knows now. He was insanely drunk. I mean, he was so wasted. That's an, maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm assuming that. But I, and I also heard that, well, I also heard that he couldn't find his room. He was wandering around the hotel upstairs trying to find his room and he wasn't even staying there. So had I yelled at him, I'm not going to insinuate anything. I'm just saying. Could have been a different kind of night. I don't know. What I do know is, is I didn't yell after him. I didn't go chasing him to his car. And I don't think I saw him leave. But yeah.
Yeah, that that was that. <laughs> then, and I yeah. Then we stayed in the and then we stayed in the lobby for a little bit, and then <laughs> here comes Jason Monday again, walking with his band, going to smoke. And I'm like, hey, it's the magician. It's a joke now. I'm a douche. I thought that we were going to be stuck there another night, so we were going to switch hotels. So we woke up the next day and check out was like at one. So we went down and hung out in the lobby, and we didn't really have to check into the other hotel until three. So uh, while we were in the lobby, at they I guess they had a Star Kid event. They had like Q and A something before. But we saw Joe Moses and the Warblers and Merch Matt, I think, walking around. And that was kind of cool, you know, just sitting in the lobby, seeing Star Kids, like, no big deal. And at this point, we've missed so many that it's just like, don't even try. Don't even, no, they're going to walk by and you can't do anything about it. Okay, so we're like, okay, we need to go. So we walk outside... And this place has, like, a thing with, I mean, well, I guess all, now we know that all downtown Chicago hotels, they flag down cabs for you. So I'm walking out, and the guy's like, the guy's like, do you need a cab? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay. Well, these guys come up in front of us, and they, I get, you know, I'm not a very big person. They didn't see me, probably. I'm assuming now. I'm not gonna, you know. But, yes. And the cab, I mean, the cab guy looks at them first, because obviously, um, it, yeah. He looked at them, and he was like, okay, there you go. And I'm just, and then at this point, I'm still a little hungover, so I'm just kind of like, no, what, what, what? And she goes, and Victoria's just kind of like, isn't that? And I literally said, and it registered just as she said that, and I literally said out loud, I said, yep. That's A.J. Holmes, and he just stole our cab. I don't know if I was saying it loudly so that he would hear it, or I just wanted to say it, but it was A.J. Holmes and Richard Campbell. I know, looking back on it now, it was just a misunderstanding, and he didn't actually steal our cab, but the way that it went down at the time, I was just like, he just stole our cab, and I wanted to be like, acknowledge him, but I didn't know what else to say, and so, in a joking way, I kind of went, Hey! AJ! Thanks! Thanks a lot! Thanks! And he just kind of looked at me and was like, Okay. <laughs> and I was like, By the way, I I'm just kidding, and, and great job on the show last yesterday. <laughs> and then Richard's like, Thanks! And I was just like, I'm a twat. <laughs> I just totally bitched at them, but yeah. Yeah, that was, that was great. And then later, I uh, tweeted about it, and I was like, AJ Holmes just stole our cab. And then he favorited it. And I was like, what a douchebag. And then Richard Cam, then I tumbled about it, and then Richard Campbell, like, apologized. And I felt like an even bigger twat, because I was like, I was just kidding. I didn't mean to make such a big deal about it. Oh, well. So, yeah. I guess that was all. That was my leaky con experience, and all the epic fails. Fun times, yeah. Anyway, I will not be attending any of your any of your Harry Potter things. I will not be infiltrating that world anymore. I will be staying away. So there you go. That was my experience, and yeah. All right, that was good. Cool.